Welcome to another edition of 30 Minutes with the Author. I'm your host, Lori Creever. And we're talking in this program with Robert Bateman, who is a renowned artist and naturalist, about his new book, Birds. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Great to be here. Yes. So you live off the coast of British Columbia on Salt Spring Island. Salt Spring Island. It's a, a medium-sized island, about 10,000 population. Mm -hmm. And um, to give people an orientation, from my studio, I can see San Juan Island in the hazy distance and the Olympic Mountains. Wonderful. So you have quite a vista then to inspire some of your painting, which is oftentimes of birds and also the environments that they're in, right? That's right. I, um, I, paint, um, I paint more birds than any other living thing. People sometimes say, uh, why don't you paint people? I do paint people. I've painted more homo sapiens than any other mammal. <laughs> <laughs> but I've painted more mammals than birds. Yeah. And the reason is, um, for, I used to be an abstract artist. And from an abstract point of view, birds are far more interesting visually. I'll just, I'll just mention mm -hmm. four birds and you and the audience can visualize. Um, bald eagle, yes. hummingbird, mm -hmm. think of the contrast. Scarlet macaw, penguin. Oh. Unbelievable differences. Yes. Whereas with, with us homo sapiens, we're basically a, a, a beige oval with some orifices. Oh. <laughs> so I rest my case as far as visual possibility. Birds are fantastic and birds have so much variety. Mm -hmm. And variety is not only the spice of life, variety is it's virtually my religion, mm -hmm. and that's what we're wiping out on the planet. We're wiping out variety and replacing with uniformity. Mm -hmm. And where do you think there, now you've traveled the world, so where do you think this is the biggest problem in your mind? Right here in North America. In North America. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, I was born in 1930, so I, I was 15, 16 when uh, World War II ended, and I've been watching what's been happening for the last half a century, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I think the most precious, valuable aspect of the planet Earth is the variety of our natural heritage and our human heritage. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we've been doing is busily placing, re replacing this with instant pudding. Mm -hmm. And I define instant pudding as slick, smooth, sweet, very, very quick, extremely convenient, which is why it's so popular. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have nothing whatever to do with the ingredients. They're all made in some committee, committee room somewhere. You put down your credit card, and that's right, and buy a package. Mm -hmm. And increasingly, this is your life. It's a package delivered to you by somebody you don't even know and doesn't even know you, but you become a market target. Mm -hmm. And this is happening all over the planet. And mm -hmm. we can, you can go from one part of the, even the whole planet now, to another part, and it's just the way, you, like the, the place you just left. Yes. And I don't not only think this is boring, I think it's dangerous because everyone knows in agriculture or any kind of systems, a monoculture is very unstable, yes. susceptible to viruses and sabotage and everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's sinful, wiping out, you know, if you want to be religious, wiping out the creation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and replacing it with this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I've, every fiber of my uh, life for the last few decades has been dedicated to stemming the tide and, and maintaining the, the variety. And every bit of my paintings, when you flip through one of my books, and this mm -hmm. is the fifth coffee table book, mm -hmm. you have no idea what's on the next page. It could be a mouse or a moose or, mm -hmm. a, or a tree frog or a, an Indian canoe. And that's what's so great about the planet. And yes. so the birds are the kind of flagship of variety mm -hmm. because we can see them and you have a different set of birds for different ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And they're like the canary in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the canary keels over, yes. we better watch out. And bird populations are keeling over. <laughs> there, yes. I've kind of said my piece on, yes. uh, on why I, I did the book on birds. But the main reason is because they're so gorgeous. Yes, and I would think that an effect that would get created from somebody flipping through your book and reading the stories that go with each painting that appears in here is not just to seek out buying that print to, ho to have in their own home, but to get out mm -hmm, and actually that. be in nature and observe these birds themselves. Absolutely. That's, in fact, there's a little thread running through the book about birding, mm -hmm. not just birds, but birding and birders. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, birding, I'm pleased to say, I, I believe it's the fastest growing outdoor activity. 
it's it's overtaken hunting mm -hmm. um, as a, as an outdoor activity and an economic uh, powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Birders and, and people. What does that mean? Birding. Just bird watching? Somebody yeah. just yeah, but, but, yes, planning but, yeah. a trip to go yeah, somewhere. Birding is kind of an insider's way of saying bird watching. Okay, um, and to snap photographs or yep, yeah, yep, yeah. uh, take photographs, buy books, buy binoculars, go on trips, go on ecological tours or go to your nearby state park mm -hmm. and uh, you know have a picnic with your kids and try to uh, see how many different birds you can see. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the different places on planet Earth that you have visited as a naturalist and as an artist. The savannas in Africa, what was right. that like? Unquestionably the best place for birds, as let alone lions and Wildlife, wildebeest yeah. and uh, giraffes and so on, is Africa. I th my favorite part of Africa is East Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, same with my wife. She loves it even more than I do. And uh, we're going in uh, February, in fact, on my 13th trip and her 10th trip. Mm -hmm. Keep going back there again and again. Botswana and other parts in Southern Africa are good too. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, um, it is just phenomenal. We try to see 300 different kinds for starters. So we, we pay attention. Um, you know, everyone we see, we pay attention. It's, uh, birding is like a game, like golf, except it's not quite as frustrating as golf because <laughs> golf, you're always mad at yourself. <laughs> In birding, you're sometimes mad at the birds, but at least you're not condemning yourself for stupidity. Um, and uh, and you, you keep score and that kind of thing. But I'd say East Africa is the, um, is the best, or Africa in general, I guess. Mm -hmm. Another one that's really good that a lot of people wouldn't realize is Antarctica. That was one of the parts in your book I was going to mention. What? Yeah. What's going on in Antarctica? For well, natural? it's it's like going to the most spectacular parts of the Rockies or Alaska, mm -hmm. and having it all at sea level with with gorgeous islands and glaciers coming right down to the ocean and the spectacular seascapes, plus abundant wildlife. Believe it or not, because the that seas is hard are to believe, yeah. because the seas are cold, they're very rich in nutrients mm -hmm. and oxygen, mm -hmm. and uh, you get abundant uh, mammals, including whales, now that they've stopped the whaling pretty well down there, mm -hmm. and um, all several different species of seals, um, and um, uh, sea lions, elephant seals, mm -hmm. and then thousands of sea birds, the different kinds of albatrosses and petrels and all that kind of thing, uh, plus tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of penguins. Penguin, of course. Yeah, yeah. and you, there's one uh, colony there on Deception Island you can look and see. Uh, probably uh, between half a million and a million living things about this big, warm-blooded things. You can go to northern Minnesota and I guess see half a million living things, but they're all black <laughs> flies or mosquitoes. Uh, but there, they're, uh, you can't even do that in the Serengeti. Uh, Serengeti, maybe a, a 10, you know, 10 or 20,000 wildebeest. Mm -hmm. So the Antarctica is abundant with life and it's a Great place to visit. It does cost a little bit, but uh, right. I was going to say. Now, how how did you get down there? Do well, you everybody go goes, with a, a yeah. boat on a ship with other naturalists, or with a some government that's got a Every, uh, station no, down there. It's or? it's a common destination now. There are many, many. I I have no idea. I couldn't even count how many different uh, tours are offered on adventure cruise ships. Mm -hmm. These are small smallish vessels. They're not love boats mm -hmm. um, that can. Uh, take about uh, 50 to between 50 and 100 people mm -hmm. and they have zodiacs these rubber inflatables that Jacques Cousteau mm -hmm. used and they lower those and you can go you can go in on beaches you can go up against cliffs you can cruise around icebergs and through ice flows watching for leopard seals uh, you can just go anywhere with the zodiac so the combination of the small vessel and the zodiacs mm -hmm. can get you can anywhere really get and up close and personal wonderful way to travel what do you think accounts for our affinity for penguins? Well, I guess it's because they look like us. A bit. <laughs> <laughs> Same with monkeys. <laughs> penguins and monkeys <laughs> are uh, part of our, uh, you know, I guess any, anybody likes something that we identify with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then have you been to the Galapagos Islands? Been to the Galapagos. Uh, there's a, a section in the book on the Galapagos. It, uh, it and the Antarctic are the two places that are like in a sense, well, also Africa, stepping into the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. where uh, until the... Still pretty pristine. Yeah, and until the 19th century, virtually no humans had set foot there. Mm -hmm. And so the animals have evolved to accept you. So 
you kind of get out of their way. And the Galapagos, the blue-footed boobies, are always trying to um, peck at you and you just have to maneuver around them as you're walking through their nesting grounds. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's abundance of, uh, of wildlife mm -hmm. and, uh, and marine mammals and you can go snorkeling with the fur seals. And it's, it's very entertaining and abundant and rich, mm -hmm. but it's threatened. All of these places are, uh, are threatened. The Galapagos, just like um, the rest of the whole world, is threatened by overpopulation of humans. Mm -hmm. Human beings are uh, invading it and they're shipping actually uh, poor people from Guayaquil in Ecuador over to farm. And then they have goats and they have rats. Mm -hmm. And of course there's no defense among these creatures on all these different islands. And mm -hmm. so there's actually tension between ecotourism and the locals who hate ecotourism because it's trying to stop their goats. Wow. So it's a, there's all kinds of issues underlying Africa, of course, and Antarctica, mm -hmm. and right here in Canada, everywhere. Mm -hmm. What do you think part of the solution is, maybe with bird sanctuaries, is that an effective a bird means? sanctuaries are not a bad little start. Yeah, but you need that's what I was thinking. It seems but, like a small But you need piece. corridors. They, there's only one ultimate solution, and it's here or here. Uh, Schumacher said, he was the guy that wrote Small is Beautiful, the real problems facing the planet are not economic and they're not technical, they're philosophical. Yeah. The philosophy of unbridled materialism is now being challenged by events. And I, I don't know if you think that's a fair description of our philosophy right here in North America. Mm -hmm. I've never heard a better one, mm -hmm. unbridled materialism. Mm -hmm. um, place you might have heard of called the Mall of America. <laughs> we have our own version <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, in Canada, West Edmonton Mall. And uh, well, just the whole instant pudding world is based on unbridled materialism. Mm -hmm. And until we can get a philosophy and, and vote for politicians who care about the future of the planet and not about salvation through selfish, selfishness or salvation yeah. through shopping, that's what it seems to be. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the word that comes out of the uh, politicians, I'll cut your taxes and, go to, and you'll have more money in your pocket and you go to the mall and buy stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't hear any other message, including in Canada, by the way. Mm -hmm. In America, people think we're so pristine and pure of mind and spirit in Canada. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. We just elected a government in, in uh, British Columbia that's to the right of Newt Gingrich. Mm 